Wake Your Podcast Up is the Black Delegates Podcast. I am your host, the Black Ryan. I'm here with Ghetto Phenom. Yo, yo. Box Wine Poppy. What's going on, fellas? What's going on with y'all, man? Not too much, man. Chill, How are you? Chill it. Been good. I've been good. It's uh, It's been a good week. It's been a good week, so good to be back with y'all. Uh, my, my two besties doing the podcast. <laughs> This dude just said strike. besties. That's it's right. one strike. One strike that's against one. you, why, sir. That's why dudes don't have friends, because we can't say we friends. <laughs> you can you say? say you're friends, but besties, what else, a little what suspect. Else just Ryan, if you, if, you ever, uh, if you ever send me a text and says BFF, I'm, a, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a driving to St. Louis and slapping you, dog. <laughs> Well, my friendship with you is not forever, sir, so I would never say BFF. It, it feels like forever, though. It, it feels like forever. It always depends. <laughs> today's episode is episode 26, and today's date is August the 5th. Fifth. I'll find a way to put that in there so it sounds good. Uh, but, all right, now, how was your week in blackness, Ishmael? My week in blackness was was good. It was very very good, solidly black. Um, you know, I, I never think of a black person to use beforehand. So I'm going to just skip it like I normally do. But um, got a couple things I want to talk about this week and my This Week in Blackness. So number one, last night uh, went out to a surprise party for a homie. His mother and I think his wife, you know, kind of joined in the Throw him this surprise party. Now, he actually doesn't live in St. Louis anymore, but he had to come to St. Louis, you know, for a quick trip. So his mother planned this surprise party with, I think it was like 40 people that were invited. And it was hilarious because he literally had no idea. Like when he walked in and saw the people, he just looked confused. His mouth dropped and (laughs) he was just trying to figure out what was going on. And so that was dope. Uh, to be a part of that, him turning dirty 30. And it was even funnier because he was just saying how stuff didn't make sense that day. And he was saying how his wife asked him to dress up so they could go out to eat, but he wanted to just rock the basketball shorts and the T-shirt and didn't understand (laughs) why she wanted him to dress up. And so that was funny. And they were walking around, you know, just killing time basically till everybody was ready at the restaurant and he was – getting annoyed with that so it just seemed like he was just aggravated that he didn't understand why certain things were happening but it ended up being because there was this big party playing for him so you know try not to be aggregate aggravated with your folks man because you you could have a blessing just waiting for you so that was a good thing to be at his party okay uh number two hooping yesterday and you know last week talked about dunking a whole lot or whatever but uh, this week, I got a different type of dunk story. So this young kid, he's like 20 years old, jump out the gym uh, crazy. But for whatever reason, this dude just has a super skill at missing dunks. He got the hops, but he just don't have the hand-eye coordination or whatever. So there was a game. We go to seven ones and twos. So it was a game. It was like six to five. And we have a clock. We had a clock yesterday, so it was like eight seconds left or ten seconds left or something like that. His team was down, and so the other team had the ball. So we thinking it's over. Other team had to take the ball out, basically try to run out the clock. He steals the inbound pass. This is a half court. Nobody's back there with him. Drives down. Instead of laying it up, he tried to dunk it and hung himself, and his team lost the game. It was hilarious. Wow. So, <laughs> so a game and the, the, for game point, wow. and the thing is, I wasn't playing that game. I was on the side running the clock, and I knew it was going to happen. Like, when he got that steal, I'm like, oh, he about to try to dunk, <laughs> and he about to miss it, and this is about to be hilarious, and that's exactly what happened. You so, got no, And we got no video of this. We, we no, need this content. I, I, oh, I didn't have my phone out at the time. So Dang. Like Now, when you say he got hung, was this, like, sprite hung? You know, was, was this like Clay Thompson in China? Like, yeah, yeah. Like, how, how bad? No, this this was the worst type of hung because he basically got hung at the bottom of the rim. And this dude, <laughs> he he has bounce normally, so I don't know what happened, but he he like normally he gets over the rim and just misses the the dunk part. 
But this one, he, like, got hung on the bottom or the side of the rim, and, like, he just didn't get up for whatever reason. And so, of course, his team was mad. Like, they were heated because they lost and they had to get off the court after that. So, How did he come down? Did he, did he, on his back, on his head, what? No, nah, he landed on his feet, but it was like okay. he got hung so bad, I think the ball, like, bounced out of bounds. So <laughs> he couldn't even recover it and try to lay it up. Hey man, I don't even know what I would say as a teammate if a dude got home for game point. For game like, point. Do you just not, you just don't talk to him, man. You know, everybody <laughs> got their head down. You shake your head like y'all just lost the NBA Finals. Like, oh, I'm laughing. You, know, you look I'm at him like J.R. Smith. Like, how do you do it? Man. <laughs> yeah, you make the make the hands out like, like LeBron. Like, what are you like, doing? What are you doing? That's he, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, that that and that's really what it was. Is one of them J.R. Smith moments where his team was just looking at him like, "What are you thinking? Like, just lay it up." And I'm not even mad that he tried to dunk because I feel like, especially at that age, with his athleticism, I'm like, you should be trying to dunk everything. But he just needs to get something together because I mean, when he does dunk, I mean, he's up there. He does it nasty, but he and just anytime misses. Anytime you dunk like, for game point, you got to do it. Yeah, but you got you got to hit it. You can't miss it. Just stay in the gym and just dunk. Like you gotta dunk two hundred times in a row before you get right. to the gym. Like you miss your jumpers. <laughs> right. So the last thing, and this is, this really is. Well, I guess it is part of the week, uh, but just an observation, man. And this is this is more of a rant on folks, a gripe that I have personally. I hate it when people call you, and a lot of times this happens at work. Not always. But when people call me and if it's about work, they just start talking about the problem without really framing what's going on. So, you know, part of my job is IT. So people will just call me and be like, yeah, what does it mean when it says blah, blah? And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. What does what mean? Like, what? tell me, are we talking about your computer? Are we talking about your printer? Are we talking about your phone? Are we talking about your mama? Like, I hate it when people just continue conversation. Like maybe I talked to this person 45 minutes ago about an issue and then they call and just continue that conversation. Like, no, I need you to reframe that. And uh, what it reminds me of is actually in high school, I dated a girl who did that. Like, you know how when you're in high school, you're talking to your girl on the phone or whatever. And then your mama pick up and she start dialing, you know, <laughs> trying to dial somebody. Because this is before cell phones, right? Yeah, we, we didn't did, have we cell did, phones. Definitely ourselves right here. When we were kids, right? And so your mama just pick up and just start dialing. And then it's always funny because after she dial, she holds and she hear you talking and she think she reached her friend or whatever. Like, oh, hello, uh, uh, Esther, is that you? And you're like, no, mama, I'm trying to talk to my girlfriend. So anyway, this girlfriend hey, I had. <laughs> this, this girlfriend I had, she would like we would had to get off the phone like quickly because when your mama pick up the phone, she need to use the phone. You gotta get off the phone, right? So we get off the phone, maybe mid conversation, and she would call me back like the next day and just continue the conversation like, oh yeah, like I was saying, blah blah. Like what? No, we can't can't just continue. You gotta reframe that because for me, you got about sixty seconds where you can go back and continue that conversation other than that i need you to frame it for me i don't know what y'all think about that i'm 100 with you like my wife can be talking to me in the kitchen and i'm not paying any attention to her at all and she's like do you hear what i'm saying i'm like no i'm not listening to you at all <laughs> <laughs> so you got you got to reframe that for me every five seconds that's, as that's long as you're good about as long as you're good about doing that see i feel like i'm good about doing that when i'm not listening i'm honest about it i'm like hey like, babe, I'm not listening. I wasn't listening to nothing you said. What are we talking about? <laughs> like, I heard this part, but tell me the five minutes before that. <laughs> but that's about it. But other than that, I mean, just uh, sometimes I'm, I'm good about saying, I don't know. What are we talking about here? Start over. Right. Can y'all listen to two things at once? Like, if you watch, if you're listening to TV and somebody's talking to you, can you do that? No. You can only I go back and forth. Man, in college, I used to, like, legit, I like, I used to, like, study with, like, just heavy rap music on all the time. I was, like, all through college. That's how I would study, like, just have rap music going in my headphones, and I'd study and just study the most mundane, boring stuff, and I'd be, I'd be straight. I could do that, man. That's because like, no you was problem. listening to Nas, though. If you listen to Nas, you could do anything at the same time. It makes you smarter. It makes you smarter. It makes you smarter. You could do anything smarter. except stay awake. 
<laughs> no, I still, man, I, hey, I look, I'd be crammed my ass off, man. But but look, dog, I, that's how it was. But, man, I don't know, something like in my mid-20s, just something clicked. And, like, at work, like, I just couldn't do it no more, man. So now, like, I have to have, like, complete, it's, it's I'm just the exact opposite of what it was in college. Now I have to have, like, if I'm trying to concentrate, I have to have a total silence. If I'm just, like, working on something that's, like, you know, okay, easy, nothing nothing big, yeah, I'll listen to, like, a podcast or music. But it, it, But I'm not really thinking. But if I had to think, like, back in the day, I was thinking. Now I'm not. When I think, I have to turn everything. I have to have total silence. And it's just I don't know. It's a, just lost that skill or some some kind of way. But I used to, man. I miss right. that actually. Okay, I'm glad that's that's not just me because it's There's, it's hard if I'm listening to one person and somebody else trying to say something. I'm like, whoa! I I can't compartmentalize that. Like you're gonna have to wait until <laughs> until this yeah, is yeah. over. There's there's science that actually says that men focus on one thing. It's kind of that hunter gatherer thing. So, like, we can hear two different stories playing, and we can focus on one and, and get it done, mm-hmm. and we can tell you what that story was about. But, uh, like, supposedly, I guess, women cannot do two stories at the same time because they'd just be like, oh, I can't take it. And they out. J- 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 any, any female listeners? Just like Ryan said <laughs> right. that, not me. Hey, man, it was a, it was a scientific study. I'm, All I know is, hey, my, science. my wife and I are talking in the kitchen. If the TV's on, like, I, I, she, she complains to me all the time. I, I, I tur- like, I'll always turn the TV down because she'll be talking to me. And, I, like, if, the, if CNN, just something in the background, I just, I, I, I can't concentrate on two things anymore, man. But I used to. But I don't know. It's just, maybe it's just in men, after a certain point, it just goes away. I don't know. You know what's weird, though? Like, my wife's car, when you put it in reverse, and she got the you know the backup camera on it, but when you put it in reverse, the radio automatically turns down. I'm like, listen, I can back up with the radio, <laughs> man. like right. that's that's not a problem. Maybe having a conversation, but let me turn my own radio down. Like every time you hit it in reverse, that might just go down from whatever fifteen down to two. Oh yeah, you gotta hit, you gotta turn that setting off. I I know how to do that. Right, yeah. Well, she don't care, and I don't. She drive her car more than me, so hey. So anyway, all right, Paul. What about your week in uh, my week? Slash my week. Was, oh, my week was so trash. My week was basically <laughs> the entire cast from Friends black. That's how. That's how. That's how black <laughs> <Nice>. that was. <laughs> there was no blackness in my week at all. No brownness whatsoever. It was. It was. Uh, it was very very white. So uh, man, I didn't do nothing. Man, it was a short week. You know, just kind of hung around the house trying to get things back to normal. Like I said, the niece came to visit us last week. And she got up out of here. Uh, what's that? We took her back to the airport on Sunday, and we, we we did the pod on Tuesday. And yeah, man, just quite, kind of quiet. Man, rained every, pretty much every day here. It's been raining and hot, so been kind of stuck in the house, just chilling with the kid. And that's it, man. Just just hanging out. My kid wanted ice cream for breakfast this morning. That was kind of funny. Uh, and other than that, man, not much, man. Just just kind of just kind of hanging out, man. I got no, I got nothing for this week, man. I'm sorry, guys. Oh, right. well, did you have? The family dog or the neighbor's dog take a look right. of the ice cream before you fed it to your child. <laughs> that will show you how white it was. This is a little throwback to last week. So what, so what about you, Ryan? What, how was your week, man? So my week in blackness was Cuba Gooding Choke. I only did about one black thing, and the rest of it was pretty white. Mm. So, you know, he did one white, one black thing, Boys in the Hood, rest of it pretty white. Hold on, he was the, he was the dude in the barber chair in... Coming to America? How can you? Ain't how no can you even that. negate that? No he had the curl. He, he he's just sitting there. No, no, giving the boys in the hood. He wasn't that black in that. That was my week though. All right, so my week in general. Let's see, what did I do? I do I want to do this rant first or not? I do have a rant. I think I'm gonna say. Come on, Black Larry that. David. Let's hear it. Let's let's talk. Let's talk about these these movies first. I checked out a couple movies. Saw uh, the Quiet Place finally. I know Ishmael already saw it. Uh, it was really good. Uh, I've been meaning to see that too. I've been meaning to see that too. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I enjoyed it. It was different because, of course, it was almost a silent movie, literally. Yep. So uh, you know they really had to uh, work hard to get that one to work, uh, but I really enjoyed it. Shout out to Jim from the Office. For writing and directing that mug, uh, I watched a little uh, the bonus features on the disc, so I uh, appreciated that. Uh, also saw Infinity War again. Uh, watched it with you the kids. Uh, yeah, bought I bought it. it. I bought it. Yeah, I bought it. Okay. On digital, so uh, that was cool. Uh, had a little snafu with that. Didn't plan on talking about this, but I think I will. So uh, sometimes I got Amazon Prime. My mom ordered stuff using my account. That's pretty black, right? So she don't want to pay for Prime, so I just order it, send it to her house, use her credit card. And so on there, when I added her credit card the last time, 
why did it make her credit card her my default for everything? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yes. So it was the default for regular purchases, which I caught two purchases that I was making for some school supplies, and I'm like, okay, well this is good. You know, I switched uh, it out, but I'm, it caught me on the uh, on the, I know where this the is Avengers going. when I did oh, the okay, Avengers. Okay. So it was $20. Uh-huh. And then there was uh, when I called her and I'm like, hey, mom, I accidentally charged $20 to that car. And I know you said that was one you didn't lose. You didn't use. So hopefully ain't no charges on that boat. You ain't getting no uh-huh. overdrafts or nothing. She was like, uh, uh, no, it'll be cool. Like, how much is it? I told her. And she went and checked. And she said, yeah, I just, uh, you know, just send me the money and uh, I'll, I'll do that. And then she was like, what about this? Fourteen dollar and something charge here. She's like, Naughty that Housewives did 11. cause an overdraft. <laughs> Sorry, Ron. Knew that was coming. You knew it was coming. <laughs> she says, "What about this fourteen dollars?" And I'm like, "I don't know what that is." I go through all my orders, didn't see nothing. So I'm like, "I don't know. It ain't mine." I say, "You might need to charge. Uh, you might need to call the bank. Talk to them about that." So <laughs> called the bank up. Bank uh, tells her to call Amazon. Amazon's like, oh, you know what that's from? That's from a Prime subscription. And I'm like, what? I go and look. Amazon Prime default membership fee was taken out of her account. So not only did I have to pay her back, oh, that's fee, like, I had to pay her like back that overdraft bucks, right? charge. No, no. That's like a, I do month. Oh, a month. Okay, gotcha. Just in case Monthly I want to get like out. like $11, ain't it? No. Yeah, but it was, I think, whatever happened, that's how much it was. It was like twelve ninety nine or something. No, okay. you think, you, man? I had that prom for a little while when we first had the kid. I was like getting diapers, but I got up off that prom. You see, I mean, you you really see value in that or what, man? For my my packages being delivered, yes. Gotcha. I'm fine gotcha. with that. Yeah, I used you to. Got, I, I had, had it, it for years. I had it for years, but I I got rid of it probably about a year ago because it just I didn't buy stuff as much as I used to. I didn't really, you know, the video stuff. I would watch one or two shows. But it was just like, I can wait. Because a lot of times, really, if I order something from Amazon anyway, it still comes pretty quickly. Like every once in a while, something takes a week. But for the most part, I still get it two or three days. So I just didn't see that value in keeping it, especially once they started raising the price. Because I got it when it was 79, and they raised it to 100. Now it's like 120 or something. So I'm like, eh. And they, they give you a lot, but I just wasn't using all and of that. And there's a lot of stuff that I don't use, like uh, Amazon Music I should probably use more. I don't right. use that. And then uh, I'm telling I do you, watch YouTube a lot music, of sci-fi. YouTube there's a lot music. of sci-fi on Amazon that I like. So, but yeah. So, uh, yeah, end up paying my mom not only that uh, membership fee for the month, but an overdrive charge of $35. I don't appreciate that. But uh, mm-hmm. that's, that's my fault, I guess. But it's kind of Amazon's fault because I don't know why they put in the card as the default. I ain't tell them to. But well, it's it. probably you may have and just not noticed it. Uh, it might have been an yeah. auto check thing in there. Um, so you, you, whenever you add a card, you got to look at those options because they don't, they won't do it without your consent. But they'll just sometimes do it and you don't pay attention because it's already uh, checked and you got to uncheck that box. Yeah, maybe. But, so the more me, you know. Let me get into this rant though. I want to get into a, a, a family uh, type of YouTube rant. So my children are five and three, and they watch nothing but YouTube all day. So uh, they got the YouTube you kids know. apps on their tablet, and that way I don't have to really watch them like that. But when they're in the living room, you know, they like to throw up some YouTube. So whenever I get home or uh, in the evening time or right before they're going to bed, or we're eating dinner a lot of times. If I don't want them on the tablet, I got to put something on in the room for everybody. So I'm forced to watch YouTube. So it's getting to the point where I'm seeing everybody that they're watching. Why are they only watching little rich white kids doing stuff? And I'm just like, why are there no black people on here? How come everybody you choose is uh, just some rich kids doing stuff and you're paying them more money as we slowly watch their house get bigger and bigger and bigger? Like we're seeing, we're seeing remodeling going on. I'm seeing pools get put in. I'm seeing jacuzzis get put in. They just balling out of control. Hobby Kids TV balling out of control now. They used to have a regular house. Now they got a huge mansion with a pool in the back, palm trees everywhere, and that's all. I feel like that's all off our backs. So I keep trying to tell my kids, like, can we watch somebody else that's not rich? Can we bring somebody else up with us? Can we? Can we? Can we find some black people that we can pad their pockets? Without YouTube watching money, 
So uh, I have been on a mission to find some black people on YouTube. No. And therefore, I found a black family. They also live in a mansion, but that's okay. Called <laughs> the Onyx Kids. Onyx Kids. Also like how they use Onyx instead of black. That way, you know, it's kind of a little, a little, a little, uh, a little subtle. So you don't really know that you're watching black kids, even though you are. And they're saying we're black. So I like it. Um, been watching them real good. So uh, I'm in search for more and more black YouTube uh, people to subscribe to. So my kids can see that they can also be on TV and get paid for doing nothing. Yeah, you should you should go and start your own YouTube page exactly. and head a little toys. Matter of fact, you like to collect the action figures anyway, so you can have those, have a little segment of those. You can have a segment, you know, with the kids' toys. So don't hate on the other people doing it. Yeah. Just go on and, and do it yourself. I think there's yeah. a lot of black YouTubers, but just not necessarily in that kids', kids space. Yeah. That genre, yeah. Definitely Man, not I, kids. I, I can piggyback off this rant because, I, like, I got – like we were talking about in the in the group chat, man. I got YouTube everything. I got the YouTube Premium, Red, whatever they used to. I think they call it Premium now, but they used to yeah. call it Red just recently. So I got all that, which and I it's great. I, I actually love it. But man, like I don't like how they have the options. So like YouTube, you can have you. I have, the kid has YouTube Kids, but when you have the YouTube Premium, you can download videos and take them with you, and that's a big benefit for me. Like being able to take the the the, the pad with us right. when we go to restaurants and have downloaded videos that he likes that he can watch and not kill my my data my, my, my data plan so like I so I have all these videos and stuff like that but they don't allow kids they don't have anybody over under uh, 18 to have a eight yeah something like that to have a YouTube account so I tried setting up so basically all his stuff is on my account and so when he uses YouTube kids <laughs> it's fine but YouTube kids does not have a lot of download it doesn't have a lot of download space so I really have to use like the regular YouTube app to download all his little videos and stuff like that so all our stuff is so intertwined so like let me just read you off so I've got I've got like I've got like YouTube music and so I, it's like all the music the rap music I like listening to and so let, let me just li- play you off my like this is like a, a list of my uh, like some of my favorite songs so these are like downloaded it's just like when you click favorite it just add it just automatically downloads it for you okay and so whatever videos he's downloading it's going in there too and so it's like. It's like, you know, uh, I got like Al Green, I got Drake, I got Talib Kweli, I got UGK. And then after that, I got uh, Baby Shark song, Do Do Do, Family Shark. <laughs> so Gummy Bear, Halloween, Monster Mash, Orange and Black, Tao, the, 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 the Little Tao, Bus. Tao, Tao, the songs. Bus is gangsta, though. Yeah, That's a good bang, show. I got, I got the ABC Kids bath song. And then right, right after that, I got Crooklyn Dodgers by Special Ed Ma- Master Ace and Buckshot. <laughs> And so, and then I got a I got a Nas rep. Then I got Hickory Dickory Doc. And this, this is the feed. This is how it'll come in order like this. And so, like man, I'm like we legit. We went for a run on Saturday. Uh, me and me and the kid. And so I'm listening to my headphones. And this this is my playlist I got playing. And so it's like the rap music I like. And then the very next play is like I'm just listening to like uh like Incy Wincy Spider. And I'm like I want to kill myself. And I know <laughs> I know YouTubers supporting the feds. I know the I know I'm on some kind of like watch list. Some kind of like uh, a pedophile list. Because of this, 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 this uh, favorites list, man. Because it is just too random and too weird. But I hate that part about YouTube. Now, the I other know, thing, knowing you, I know you don't want your kid pulling up your caramel cutie uh, uh, <laughs> YouTube uh, playlist. Man, no, I, no, I, I learned long. I learned long ago. Like I saw, incognito yeah, I, mode. I don't. No, I don't think there is no. I just don't I, like. I don't do anything. Like there's none of that stuff on YouTube anyway. But I just don't like anything that's kind of like controversial. I just I just don't put it on there, uh, so it doesn't show up on the feed. So I just only get on YouTube for that 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 type of stuff. Uh, or that or, I, or that or I have to log out, but I'm not logging out on my phone, so I never do. So I, I just never do it. But uh, but yeah, man. The other thing though, like kind of talking about what you were talking about, man. Like my kid, like he loves these videos of tr- like Lego trains, like they're Lego train. Like he loves trains, man. So like Lego trains, and so like there's these videos where these dudes like set this whole like you know uh, like intricate like thing out like track outdoors. It goes through like little tunnels through the water through the yard, like little 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 things, blah blah. And he could just watch that for hours and hours and hours. And so I'm like, man, you know, that'd be kind of cool if I, like, for his, for, you know, he just had his birthday, but I was like, for Christmas, maybe I would just buy, like, one of these little Lego sets. Man, I get on Amazon, look at those costs? things. Yep. Man, dog, I did not know. I did not, they're like three, two, three hundred dollars just for the little starter kit. And I'm like, looking yeah, at these man. tracks these dudes got on YouTube. Man, it's got to be like two, three, four, five thousand dollars worth of track that they, 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 they've got invested in this. So these guys got to be making tons of money off these little videos. Cause they're just little kids, Lego, like my, my little kids, just watching it over and over. Lego so I was telling the, no joke. 
Yeah, so at dinner, I was telling my wife, I was like, yeah, I looked up those trains, you know, he, that, that, that Peyton's watching all the time. And, you know, I was like, man, you know how much those things cost? And she was like, uh, you know, $50. I was like, no, it's like $200 just for the, like the little starter kit of that. And I was like, I was like, nah, that's, I'm cool on that, man. And, but they serious about it. It's just, it's just interesting, man. On YouTube, you get kind of these little, in these little, uh, these little, you know, subgroups. And anyway, it just keeps going, going, going. Yeah, like those Star Wars ones is like thousands of dollars. Man, like yeah, it's crazy. Millennium Falcon. Yeah, it's a lot. Crazy. Yeah, but that was that was my week in blackness. Well, cool, man. We want to get into these white collar crimes. Wow. Uh, crime yes, time. we have to. No, we have to. I think we, I think I think the people want it. Let's hear it. Yeah. All right. Here we go. <laughs> All right. Our first white collar crime. I thought there wasn't gonna be any. But, of course, there is. I purposely didn't put any on there. And then I come in today and Ishmael has put three on there. We can't avoid it. I tried. Yeah. Got to so have. Here we go. So, the first them. white collar crime is helping the homeless while black. Uh, a good Samaritan was uh, outside of a Safeway uh, grocery store. Her and her family thought that they would help a, a homeless man outside by giving him uh, some, some food and uh, things for him and his dog. And for some reason, a uh, one of the employees thought that they should call the cops on him, on her. <laughs> yep, and they said basically that they were out there, you know, acting suspicious. And I guess they probably thought that there was some type of drug transaction going down because you got these black people speaking to this homeless person. So you know, can't just be out in the, the supermarket supermarket. Shopping lot, uh, helping market. people, being a good Samaritan, uh, because the cops will get called for you. And you know, a lot of these cities don't like homeless people anyway. They do whatever they can to try to keep them away, especially from businesses. So, uh, just a shame somebody's trying to do a good deed. And they got to call the popo. Yep. All right, white collar crimes number two. This one is uh, uh, teaching while black. Or colleging while black. I don't want to. Don't want to leave you hanging there, Ish. I know you like colleging that, while black. That man, title. Come on. <laughs> a Smith College employee uh, called the police on a black student, saying that she looked out of place. She was just there teaching for the summer, teaching high school uh, uh, chemistry to high school kids <laughs> in the STEM program. So, uh, man, we we're, we're so glad that they were able to uh, to use their uh, their uh, whiteness for uh, some good. I like the uh, picture of the girl that that got the call. Cops called her in the in the article because her face basically says it all. Yes, it does. Like I'm tired of this. Her face is like, "What the hell are you doing bothering me?" Right. And even though you say it's teaching while black, she's a college student at Smith College. She yes. had, was eating lunch just in a uh, common area, which we had another white collar crime like this a couple of weeks back. Uh, I think that was at an Ivy League school, um, but. Of course, somebody like you look out of place. It was this black girl doing eating on a, a college, college. campus. <laughs> what are you doing? Did, did, hold on, so, let me ask you. Did you all, all ever have anything like this in your like education experience, like at, at Mizzou or wherever? Oh, sorry, if I can if I can say that or wherever you guys went to, did you guys ever like have something like this? Because I did actually. It's it's a little it's a little flip on this. But did y'all ever have, have anything like this happen to y'all? For me, not really, and it was. Interesting because a lot of people in my fam didn't necessarily want me to go to Mizzou uh, because there was a history of racism down there, you know, mid Missouri. Um, Clearly, <laughs> but I really didn't have any issues except one time I was going. I don't remember. I was either going to the gym or I was coming home from the gym, like late night. I think I was going to the gym and I was just walking across campus. This may have been freshman or sophomore year, and. Um, I'm just walking down the street in this pickup truck with, I'm guessing, some frat boys in it, a bunch of white dudes in it. They just yelled out the N-word like, hey, nigger. And I'm just like, what? <laughs> and they kept on driving. I was like, oh, okay. So that was my one and only racist moment that happened gotcha. down at school, yeah. at least that I'd really recognize. Uh, I would say not as much. I mean, I, I was the uh, building manager when I went to uh, – University of Missouri St. Louis and uh, and sometimes we had like weekend events or Friday night events and I had a uh, like the black student uh, union or something like that having a party one time it really wasn't a party it was like one of those things where they were showing like art and they were having 
refreshments and some music was playing and mm-hmm. uh, the police rolled up in there like, you know, said somebody called them. Um, I really didn't understand what was going on. You know, I told them I worked there and everything was good. I don't know what they were doing, but of course, well, we want to look around and make sure everything's okay. But uh, that's probably the extent of that. But what was yours? Yeah, I got one. Like this, so I went to Memphis for undergrad and grad school. So this is happening in grad school, actually. So this is like I'm a little older, a little more mature. You know, I'm not, I'm not wearing the a little bit, a little bit, a little bit more mature. So, but like, so I went to a, it was you know, grad school classes. They're most in the evening. I had, you know, I signed up for all these classes. And, you know, my job is like they're helping pay for a lot of these classes if they're like related to what I'm doing. And so, like, I'm, you know, a lot of them are like financial, econ- you know, economic related classes and stuff like that. But there was one class, and I signed up for it, and it was like open to me, like, you know, like the the things that you, you know, the the syllabus or whatever you take at the beginning of the year. I forget what they call that, you know. And you you look through the list and say, okay, here here are my electives and blah blah. So I was like, oh, this looks ele- interesting, and I, like, you know, it was it was incumbent on me to take like harder type electives because that would make it easier for my company to to, to you know reimburse me for these classes. Uh, if you know, I, if I took something like kind of lightweight, they would probably be like, "Nah, we, you know, we're not going to cover that because we, we, you know, that's just kind of broad." If you add something that was like really like technical, then they'd be like, "Okay, we'll we'll cover that." So I took this class. I remember it was like ec- econometrics, which is like like it's like economics to like the fourth power. It's just like some some super nerdy stuff, right? But anyway, so I first day of class comes, you know, I go to the class, blah blah, blah and I'm sitting down. It's it's not a big class, it's maybe like. I remember it was like it was like a basically a big round table, and so we go in there, and it's really small. Maybe you know, not not like a usual like auditorium or something like that. So it couldn't have been more than like fifteen kids in there, in the grass. But everybody comes in there is like Chinese. I saw a couple people come in there. You know, most people that came in there were like Chinese, Japanese kids, and a couple Indians, and maybe like a couple of white kids in there. But I, you could definitely just looking at them. You like before I even get because I really didn't get to talk to too many people in there. They, you know, you could tell they weren't from America. They were probably like Russian or something like that. So anyway, then the professor comes in. He's like this older Indian dude, and so like he's going down the list and calling out names. And uh, you know, so I'm, you know, I say here whatever like that. And so we kind of go through the class and stuff like that. But I kind of I get the sense that I'm like pretty much the only American in the classroom. Now I'm, I'm qualified to be in this class and all stuff like that. But then like so at the end of the class, like the the teacher literally came up to me and he was like basically like. <laughs> Uh, I don't think you're gonna do well in this class uh, Dang. Dang. because yeah, he, <laughs> right. and, and like and it, like he was like he he didn't know anything about me, never met me before, nothing like that. He was just like, I don't think you're gonna do well in this class because these are like a lot of these people are like PhD going going to get their PhD or something like that. And I was like, well, I'm in the MBA program, and uh, you know I'm interested in this topic or whatever like that. So he's like, I don't think you're gonna do well in this class, blah blah. blah. And it's got, you know it's really math based. And I was like, well, I'm pretty good at that stuff and stuff like that, blah 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 like that. So anyway, but the dude was like, he basically was like, man, get up. You know, you should, you, you don't need to be here. <laughs> get up out of here. And, you know, I, I, I talked to my boss about it when I got there. And I was kind of like really conflicted. I was like, man, should I, you know, because I was, at first, my, part of my brain was like, man, F this dude. I'm going to sit, I'm going to stay in this class. I'll pass this class. I I, I, I can do this work or whatever like that. But that other part of me was like, man, if the dude don't, you know, I was like, man, what am I trying <laughs> to do? Right? Right? What? Maybe he meant, but, I, but yeah, the other part of me was like, man, what well, this dude's right. And like, I don't really want to like, I'm just trying to get this degree. I'm not trying to kill myself. I, I, I already got my job. I got the job I want. You know what I'm saying? I'm not like trying to like, you know, float this out, you know, float this into something, leverage this really into something, something big. And I don't think that this class is necessarily going to do it for me. So, so did, so you, I just, did you let him I transferred out? I went, oh, I stayed, I stayed for two weeks and then right before the drop date, I left, but, but I did the work, but I was, it was like really super tedious, but yeah, man, those dudes were like all PhD students, but it was just like a, it was more like an, I don't know if it was like a racist thing. It was more like an elitist type thing. Like, oh, we're the PhD students and we do what, you know, we, we've been in school forever. It's like, man, okay, well, you, you just, you ain't making no money. You just, you just got here. You just been in college because, and plus the recession was going on at the time and stuff like that, or the, the 2000 recession. So you like, talk about told them they wasn't making no money. <laughs> no, I didn't say that. I didn't say none of that, but you know, I mean, no, I mean, they, these dudes are probably all these all these Asian kids probably had tons of money, you know, whatever like that. But they, were, I was like, I was like, I don't need this. I don't need this headache. So I was like, you know, I talked to my boss, and he was like, oh, I'm cool with it if you want to switch it out to something else. So I took, I forgot what else I changed it to, but yeah, man, I had a little elitism thrown at me, and it was it threw me in a weird space, man, at the time. So I don't know, man, just 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 different things. Not really a racist thing, but just uh, maybe they thought I was too dumb. And and to be honest, I, I do look pretty dumb sometimes. <laughs> Did he call you yep. Pablo? Did he say go back right. to Mexico, Pablo? Yeah, hey Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> Pedro, I don't think this class is for you. I think what no, I think what and the way he tried to say it was like he was like, oh, oh yeah, we've had some NBA students in the past, uh, uh, you know, take this and, and they never seem to do really well, and I and I was like, 
you know, it's basically like, you know, just like, it was an elitist thing. It was kind of like, oh, this is for like the, you know, the engineering, you know, doc, doctoral students. I was like, man, I can take this stupid class. Cause I, 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 mean, I actually do a lot of that stuff at my job. So I was like, I can, I know I can handle the code, the workload, but I was like, all right, man, whatever. I, I just, you know, I did it's just like, what, you, do you really feel like fighting? So yeah, the dude won, man. He got me. The guy got yeah. me up out of there. <laughs> so Paul said, Paul said, if y'all, y'all nerds ain't making no money up in here, if y'all want to play big bank, <laughs> take little bank, then you holler at me. Other than that, I'm going to be up in this class. Right. <laughs> that's right. I, that's right. I, I, the last, the last class I was up in there, I, I came in there with like the, the, the money phone, you know, I just got the big yeah. stack of like ones. <laughs> like, I can't hear y'all. I'm just talking to my advisor, switching this class out. <laughs> It's like I forgot a number two pencil. Who who won one for a thousand dollars? I'll just pay you a thousand dollars. Let me get a pencil. Oh uh, man, but yeah, but the man, that Indian dude, he tapped me on the, he, he like patted me on the shoulder and stuff like that. Man, get up out of here, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'll snuff you, man. All right, well let's let's go and slide to the white number, collar three. Crime, number three. White yeah. collar crime. Number three is a is a first time uh, repeat quote unquote offender of the white people. You have mm. offended twice, sir. Uh, remember the the young boy in Ohio who uh, cut a little patch out of his neighbor's grass, and they called the uh, the police on him. Yeah, yeah, just this a couple time, weeks ago. Yeah, just a couple weeks ago, not long, but apparently this dude is a troublemaker. He mm-hmm. was slipping, sliding while black. Yep. So uh, <laughs> apparently they were having a family get together over the Fourth of July holiday. Uh, and uh, the neighbors uh, claimed that they were slipping, sliding, and, and bumping their fence. And so uh, they called over the, the cops and had them look into it. Ishmael, you read a little bit more out of this story than I did. Is there anything that you want to highlight on this before we move on? Well, the biggest thing to highlight is that it was the same neighbor that called about the grass thing. Mm. So they said that this particular neighbor, and she says that she's not racist, you know, of Even course. though She's they got estimate, friends. they estimate that she has called the police. I want to say it said like sixty times over wow. the past like ten years or five years or something like that. Over yeah, a, a couple years span, she called like sixty times on this family. So it has nothing to do with the color of their skin. You know, this not. is probably the only black family in the neighborhood. But the fact that. This kid bumped into her fence on a slip and slide. She called the cops on him once again. And Don't so, the police start charging you after so many times of calling the police if nothing's happening? I know it, I've heard that in my certain, job. Where certain we did areas they do that, but okay. certain areas they don't. So, oh, this said, yeah, sixty times in eighteen years. But they That's need to. They need to start. Well, I don't know. Charging, charging. I gotta find you at least. I wouldn't well, want to put nobody in jail for it, but you should get a fine. The problem with that, again, is that gets weaponized against black folks. Because if you remember in St. Louis, that issue in Maplewood, the lady who yes, yeah, kept calling that. the police and then they basically kicked her out of her house because right. they said, oh, you got too many calls to the police, even though she was calling for domestic violence. Like her ex-boyfriend was coming over and beating her and they right. kicked her out, you know, because of a nuisance law. So I feel like if you charge or if you try to arrest them, they're going to weaponize that against black folks and white folks are going to get a pass. So I think we talked about this before. Really, it's got to be the dispatchers that just be like, man, get out of here. Like, just hang up on them. <laughs> it's like, what? They can't really do that, up? though, because you never know. Click. Yeah, never and they know. open Come to on. lawsuits and stuff, man. It's yeah. a slippery so slope. Litigious. Yeah. I don't care. It's tough. I need, they, they need to start. If it's something, if it's not a dire emergency, if it's not like, oh, I'm getting beat or I got a gun pointed at me or something like that, if it's somebody ran into my fence, I'm going to need you to take some video. You got a camera phone. Send us the video. Let's see if this is really necessary. So I'm not about to send no police. Or you just send the police officer when he in that area, just like, all right, when Dan is over in that way, when he going home or something, we'll have him come check it out. <laughs> in two months, we'll come out. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I mean, yeah, they do got the nine one. They got the non emergency, the non emergency line. But people, like, uh, I think we, I think we I have. I don't even know what that is. You don't. You got your the police, your police force. Line. The police force has a like. It's not a nine one. It's just like a regular like whatever your area code is, and it's a it's a line to right. the police to your police station. But it's just basically like. It's a non-emergency. Like, okay, yeah, like my neighbor's, 
Yeah, he's mow, mow his grass and it's too high or so, you know stuff like that. But that's you know, that's what it was called. But they don't advertise. The problem is a lot of people don't advertise it, so nobody knows. Like you don't know what it is, and so when you need to make that determination, well, that's why like, calling the police. But the, right, but, people, but, but there are people that like, but people, that people, there are people out there that just like they don't know the difference, so they're like, well, I just call nine one. That's when the police come. That's what I call when they shouldn't do that. They should call the non emergency line, and then they'll be, and it's kind of like what you're just saying. They'll get, it won't be two months, but they'll get around to it at some point, and it won't be the level of scrutiny probably, right? But people don't. Right. The, the problem is the police forces. They probably could do a better job by advertising that. Hey, don't call for some stupid stuff. If there's a real crime going on, a real emergency. Use this number. Anything else, use this other number, and we'll do that on a on a you know as needed basis, or use our own judgment. <laughs> well, I, I don't even know if the police need to advertise. Well, the police do need to advertise. Quit calling us for stupid stuff. I right, will yeah. say that, but they don't need to advertise a phone number because if I decide, you know what, I want to get some pizza from this new. I'm gonna get the Black Ryan pizza. It just opened up, and I don't know the phone number. What do I do? I Google pick up my phone, I go to Google, I use Siri, I use um, Google Android. Assistant, whatever. Yeah. What's the number to Black Ryan Pizza? And they're going to tell it to me. If I say, but what's the number had, we... to the St. Louis Police Department, they're going to give me the number. So I don't but need you, to call we, but, 911. But we literally just had Ryan say he didn't even know that that was a thing. <laughs> so that's the problem. People don't know that. So they, they think like 911 equals police. When no, I'm, I'm not police. saying I didn't think the police had a phone number, but you say like, is, is there a 311? Is there another 111? Yeah, in some states, no, no, there, I don't know in that. some states there is another number, but not all of them. So that's what I'm saying. If you don't know that number, just Google it. It's not that difficult. And, now, and do y'all quit really think the cops on stupid stuff? Do y'all really think that would change anything, whether they call the police department directly or they call nine one one when it's dealing with black people? I the mean, there's still if, if you call the police, if you just call the police, they're going to send a police car out there. So I mean, at the end, of, maybe it's a distinction. At the end of the day, it's probably a distinction with a, a, a distinction without a difference. But it, I, you know, maybe the threat level is down because the cops are like, hey, this is this was an emergency line. Maybe I mean, at the margins, I'm not saying it's going to solve everything, but maybe at the margins, it, it can improve things. Maybe, but. It, You'd have to like really study it, I guess. Yeah. That's my personal take. Yeah, that's interesting. I, I doubt it would change anything for us. Right. I think either way, it's gonna be a problem. Like, dude, yeah. I did not call nine one one. Why you got your guns drawn? They'd be like, "Is black? Right. Is that black? <laughs> exactly. It's an emergency. We yeah. just figure you dialed the wrong number. You dialed six seven six three two nine eight one eight one instead of nine one one. Right. You just had it confused." I feel I should call nine one one on Paul because he's still watching foosball. But since he decides that he still wants to watch foosball and he doesn't <laughs> care, he watched the foosball Hall of Fame this weekend. So Paul, Man. can you tell us something about the foosball Hall of Fame? The food. Okay, first of who all, got for people that, who got it? First of all, uh, for who? Okay, the football Hall of Fame, not the foosball Hall of Fame. The Pro Football Hall of Fame is what Ryan is referring to. I did watch a little bit of that. My wife even watched a little bit of that, and I'll tell you the reason we did watch oh, that. So watch a little bit of that is because of one man, <laughs> Mr. Ray Lewis, and we'll get to him in a minute. But uh, Ray Lewis is one of the main nominees uh, or inductees. Uh, other ones included Randy Moss, uh, Terrell Owens. We'll kind of we'll kind of get in that in a second. Uh, Brian Erlacher. Uh, Brian Dawkins, who was actually, you know, kind of, kind of afterthought in this whole class, but really good player. Strong I have to safety, give Philadelphia Brian Eagles. Brian Dawkins, yeah, 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 and uh, a couple of older dudes, uh, two older dudes from like the, you know, from the sick. One dude that was like on the Packers, like first two Super Bowl teams, who I actually read a little bit about a long time ago, but so, but he finally made it in after like forty years waiting to get in. So I, I couldn't even believe the dude was alive, but uh, he got in. So anyway, so th- I mean that that was a list, but the main the, the main attraction was Ray Lewis, and we'll get to that in a second. But kind of the highlight, and as it relates to the black delegates, uh, was Randy Moss. And Ish, I'm going to turn over to you. You want to you want to kind of lay out what Randy Moss did? That was kind of a, a very uh, very promising statement for the for the yeah. for the black delegation. Yeah, absolutely. And first, I will say that Ryan is right that you are all in on this NFL thing because you knew everybody who was honored. Like I knew right. Ray Lewis and Randy yes, Moss, yeah. and I saw something. When I looked at the thing on Randy Moss, I saw that Brian Dawkins was in. Like, that's the only way that I knew. So I don't pay attention. But clearly, you are still all in on the NFL. Last week, we talked a little bit about the Cowboys, although we didn't air that segment. So Paul <laughs> is all about the NFL. But anyway, going to uh, the Hall of Fame thing with Randy Moss. Just wanted to give him a big shout out because Randy Moss came up there, did his acceptance speech. Uh, but there were two things that just stood out that will immortalize him forever 
and blackness. The first thing is that Randy Moss bus has the cornrows. Yes. Straight back. <laughs> and there's Straight nothing backs. blacker yes. than having your Hall of Fame bust have cornrows. I think, I don't know if Alan, I, I guess Alan Iverson has is? cornrows oh, too. No. So AI and Randy Moss, I mean, shout shout out to him for that. You know, Randy Moss is a country boy, so he, he got the cornrows in the Hall of Fame, so big shout out to him. But the even bigger, more impactful thing is the tie that he had on. And I think this may set the standard for NFL players going forward because people get mad at kneeling or people get mad, but you got to switch it up. So Randy Moss really didn't speak about social justice or activism, but the tie he had on had, what, 12 or 13 names of African-Americans who were slain by the police. So the names that were on this tie, he had Greg Gunn, Tamir Rice, Akai Gurley, Paul O'Neill, Eric Garner, Freddie Gray, Walter Scott, Sandra Bland, Akeel Dinkins, Alton Sterling, Michael Brown, and Trayvon Martin. So those names are on his tie. It's a nice tie, black tie with the red lettering on the names. And so he made a statement without really having to make a statement. So yeah. big ups to him uh, using he, his big he, day to do that. And but, but before now he didn't make a statement in his in his speech. Right, he did not make a statement. But, but before the before the ceremony, I think it was before. I'm pretty sure it was before. He was sitting down with I think Susie Colber, and she asked about the tie. And so he, and it was funny because if you see the video, I'll, I'll see if I can get a link to that. But there was a Ray Lewis is sitting beside him, and Ray Lewis has got a, a face look on his face like I don't want to be here right now. Right. <laughs> what he's talking about, but but Randy Moss is talking about you know why he felt it was important to wear the tie, and it was a, it was a good little short little statement he made about the tie and stuff like that. Uh, but he, basically, yeah, you're right. He's just like, like you know, gonna, he was, he was going to let the tie do the, do the speaking yeah, for him. So it was, it was interesting, man. But Ray Lewis definitely looked a little little constipated sitting over there beside <laughs> Man, that, now, that clown. Like I, would like said, to give, I would like to give honorable mention to Warren Sapp, who also has a bust with cornrows. Oh, yep, yep, yep. But, hey, and, and, you know, maybe Jerry Rice, because Jerry Rice had those struggle cornrows when he was <laughs> the, the Raiders. <laughs> so he, he, he might, he might have, yeah, Jerry Rice had many struggle hair, hairstyles in the latter half of his career. Let's let's be honest here. He's right. he's the GOAT. <laughs> the goat, the struggle GOAT. He's the GOAT and struggle GOAT. He had that Popeye's chicken mask, too. Actually, uh, hold on. Hold on just, just, but, but real, there was actually a big debate about this online at last night. Uh like so, who who's the best wide receiver of all time? Jerry Rice or Randy Moss? Jerry I know Rice. you guys don't. Jerry Rice. What, what about you, Ryan? I mean, we gotta say Jerry Rice's numbers are. You know, you can't you can't argue his numbers. He's like Will Chamberlain in that yeah. regard. You know, yeah. his numbers are ridiculous. I mean, but Randy, Randy Moss, Moss was could have more been spectacular if he had had plays. a real quarterback. Yeah. Yeah, I think Randy Moss is just a more physically. Just a, just a just a freak. I mean, just a, just revolutionized the position. I think Jerry Rice just was a, you know a workout you know workout freak. I mean, he just he was he was gonna relentless and Randy Moss just naturally gifted. Just, just the the speed, the size, the the everything. When he wanted when he wanted to do it, he could do anything. But he wasn't. How many touchdowns like, did Randy Moss have with Tom Brady? Oh, in that one season, like yeah. twenty six or something. It was like that? ridiculous, man. Imagine if that dude had a real quarterback. He had Dante Culpepper for most of the time. Culpepper he was bad, too, though, man. Yeah, but he was he was too busy running. You know, yeah. if you had an actual stay in the pocket quarterback, yeah, man, that dude would be nice. Er, but hey. Yeah. So what about T.O.? Yeah, T.O. So, okay. had his little side well, hold show. On, before, we get, yeah, but let's, before we get yeah, before we get T.O., let's talk about Brian Erlacher. I don't mind, I'm just going to make sure, even though that's the white delegation, Brian Erlacher, as, we've, as we were talking about cornrows, Brian Erlacher famously was playing his whole entire career with a bald head. And you could look at him right. and kind of say, like, the dude had no hair. Flash cut, flash forward to, to, to Sunday, to Saturday night, Brian Erlacher has a full head of hair, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> So really? and I don't know I if and I don't know up. if y'all know this I don't know if y'all know this but like if you go into Chicago if you fly into Chicago and like have to go downtown there are numerous billboards throughout Chicago with Brian Erlacher he's advertising hair plugs a hair plug company so he's <laughs> this man's living the hair plug life and he's looking good man it looks like it looks like doll hair up there because because the the TV was in HD so you could really see it up close but man he's got a full head of hair now Brian look. Erlacher does not look like what you remember him back in the day look I see the results. <laughs> I see the results, so you can't. Hey, but really, look, I'm, can't I'm watching, argue, I'm but if you had nothing and now you got that, you know. You hey, but play. hey, real talk. 
I, I, I joke right now, but look, if 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 if, if mine starts going, hey, I'm gonna be right there calling that dude. I'm like, yeah, let me get that Brian Erlacher. <laughs> <laughs> be right there okay so that's enough about Erlacher so oh and Brian Dawkins Brian Dawkins man get rid of those hats man come on man <laughs> you don't need to wear the uh, the 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 uh, uh <laughs> man what's the dude uh what's the what's the fat dude from the Kansas City Star the reporter Jason Whitlock, Jason Whitlock. <laughs> Brian Dawkins do not wear the Jason Whitlock no, hat don't wear put, the Jason he put Whitlock the hat, hat he put the hat on the bust and took <laughs> don't put the don't wear the Jason Whitlock hat Brian Dawkins but uh, so so next T.O. Uh, Terrell Owens, uh, yeah. So you know, of course, he was salty because he uh, did not get elected to the Hall of Fame last year, which would have been his first year of eligibility. And uh, you know, personally, I, I'm not a Terrell Owens fan. He did play for the Cowboys for a while, sure. but I'm not a Terrell Owens fan. But I respect you know him as a player. Uh, he was definitely you know he's not in the top two to me, but he's definitely a top five wide receiver all time. Uh, and so he decided not to come to the Hall of Fame. That's the first dude that ever. Not came to the did not come to the Hall of Fame to to accept his jacket, you know, and get inducted. He decided to go to his alma mater, the University of Tennessee, Chattanooga, and give a a, a protracted speech. Did you guys any of you guys see any of that? No, no. Nope. I'm sure. I'm assuming no. Yeah, it it really wasn't worth talking about. He went down there and basically just you know talked about how he you know he felt he was treated unfairly. How many people were there? That's what I wanted to know. I'm sure a lot from the university were there. They didn't show the crowd in the, crowd? in the clips I saw. I'm, I'm like, sure. Was it, I mean, just his, was it just his grandma? Like, how many people let, was there? Let's be, let's be real. There ain't a lot going on in Chattanooga. So <laughs> 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 if we got any fans in Chattanooga, sorry. <laughs> Actually, uh, a coach that went to – coach at Memphis, he, he, that was his coach, uh, uh, Tommy West, who was a coach at Memphis, a really good – one of our better coaches. He coached uh, Terrell, uh, Terrell there, so I'm sure he was there. But yeah, it's not a it's not a big school. But anyway, we can just move on past uh, Terrell Owens. But he did yeah, his I little whining crime. That they mailed him his jacket. That he was like, I'm not coming. They was like, All right, we're gonna put it in the mail, not priority mail. We just about to put this mug in like <laughs> media mail. You'll get it in five <laughs> right. to eight days. Thirteen business days. <laughs> <laughs> Some it, good man, shade I, by the league. Yeah. Yeah, good. I mean, this, they ain't put no insurance on it. Nothing. Like right. It, it's it's just, exactly. No signature required. <laughs> that mug I mean, was wrinkled. He got that mug. Yeah, it was put hella the wrong wrinkled. Address on it. His neighbor got that mug. Right. I mean, I, yeah. <laughs> All right. So we've been talking about football a long time. Let's yeah. get to Ray Lewis so we can. Get yes. Out. The, yeah. Let's get out of here. So the last, last one, the the the, the, the man of the of the hour on on the Hall of Fame was Ray Ray Lewis. You know, uh, anybody that knows Ray Lewis knows the man can talk. Every time he talks, and I just, I just can't stand listening to him. Every time the man talks, it's literally like, it's like he's talk, it's like he's a sergeant talking to a soldier who's getting ready to go into like the the most epic battle. It, it could be literally like him trying to decide what shoes to put on that morning, and it's always like an epic, <laughs> epic struggle. But anyway, so like if you watched it, like before the thing, they were before the a couple days before they were asking him like how long he thought his speech was going to be, and he said roughly twenty five minutes. And there was a lot of a lot of chatter on Twitter. <laughs> everybody was trying to take the over. They were hoping they could take bets on this because everybody was pretty sure he was going to go over. Well, he went he went on a thirty three minute speech, and uh, <laughs> and when he first came out there, I forgot. I think Randy Moss went before him. But when they, when they when they were like transitioning to to Ray Lewis coming up there, they removed the podium, and <laughs> no one's ever removed the podium. And they he did not use the microphone because he did not have a podium. He decided to what? use one of those like Joel Osteen like headsets. Yeah, they gave him the headset. Oh, they gave him the headset. A, this dude gave a uh, motivational speech. D- dog, gave yeah, a sermon. Like, right, right. Um, that's why I sent you the thing. Like it was thirty three uh, minutes. This man walking back and forth, sweating through his entire suit. It literally his entire suit up on stage. He had a, a full white towel, like the towel, like the football players tuck into their t- yeah. to the back of their pants. He had that, and he was wiping wiping up his sweat the whole time. And he was just doing all his rambling, you know, like, you know, epic battle, gladiator mode, you know, you know, talk. He did the dance with Jason. With, I was going to uh, say, did he do his dance? He oh, did he did. Dance. Yeah, he had a. Oh. Yeah, John He got to do that, though. He should have came out to that and just left. But it was but whack, he, though. When he did the dance, it wasn't even with oh, energy. With like, no you energy. did all that sweating. Like, you just played a full football game. But he did it, and it was it, is a. Uh, Paul's buddy would say it was low energy, man. It was just low energy. <laughs> it, it, it was low energy, but then he was like, "If you just listen to what he's saying, look. First of all, man, do not. If you're out to listen to this podcast, do not go and look up the speech and listen to it. If you haven't listened to it, because it is painful. It's just, it's just him just going on and 
and self promoting himself and just and just how you know great and how epic and everything you know the struggles and the it's like man just come on even my wife was just like man let's get this dude up out of here his hair was crispy uh, he had that he had that uh that toner cartridge ink all over toner his head cartridge. and look and look look and you were if you wa- I, I was watching him like I was waiting for him to rub that towel across his head and all that black stuff come pa- come off on on that towel <laughs> but he wouldn't go he wouldn't he wouldn't rub that top of his head he just he was just rubbing right there at the brow. <laughs> Because hey, all, a, all that mess is going to come quick out there. side note, did y'all know that toner, like printer ink or toner ink, is the most expensive liquid in the world? Oh, I'm sure yeah, it is. Little I'm, tidbit. I'm sure. Little I'm tidbit. sure. It's a lot of crazy stuff on there. Every time I have to buy that little tiny cartridge for my, for my, my crappy little HP uh, printer, I'm like, how is this $25? <laughs> how is this little tiny thing that... It's gonna last maybe two hundred pages, twenty five bucks. Right. It's, and that's it's just the black one. If you get color, it's killing you. Oh man, hey, don't ask for nothing from color from me. You ain't getting it. <laughs> <laughs> you, ain't, you ain't getting no color, no no color ink from me, dog. Keep it uh-huh. on grayscale. Right. Hey, grayscale one one hundred percent. But uh, but yeah, man. So his hair was was shining. It was the, the hairline was was painted in, looking crispy. He did the he did the trash dance. He made a bunch of excuses. He did not thank his lawyers. I was waiting for that part. He did not thank his lawyers in the speech <laughs> that I heard. I may have missed that. He did have a he did have a part in there where he he did have a part in there where he was talking about his kids and he was talking about how he still even to this day still kisses his kid in the mouth. But it was so funny, dog, because when he said that the camera panned, they, they cut from him to the to the crowd and they had a, a like a, just a long shot going across the row of all of his like four, five, six, seven, eight kids. And they were all shaking their head no while he was saying that yeah. he, he still kissing them. They're all like, no, we don't know what you're talking about, dude. You're just full of it. Was Lil so Wayne that was there hilarious. Too. There was another part in there where the man sit there and said, that, so for hey, some reason, Mike, his hands together. Michael Phelps, the, the Olympic swimmer, was there. He's he's from Baltimore, so I, I guess they're associated. But uh, Ray Lewis said like that's like his best friend is Michael Phelps, and I, my wife was like, isn't Michael Phelps like 15 years younger than him? So like. Like how can they be hanging out together? But somehow Michael Phelps and Ray Lewis are besties. They're BFs. BFs. Marijuana, <laughs> marijuana unites all. <laughs> I guess so, man. But uh, man, it was it was it was crazy. And then at the end, yeah, he was just sweating through the jacket, and it was just it was just a mess, man. Thirty three minutes. Somehow it was not the longest speech in Hall of Fame history. Nope. Brett, Brett Favre, Favre went thirty six. Yeah, I don't know how Favre. that happened, but but anyway, man, it was it was it was it was a it was everything I thought it would be from a Ray Lewis speech. He definitely was talented, but yeah, I just I just can't listen to that man talk, man. I just cannot listen. It, it, it's like it's like when you run to a person that like tries to sell like Herbalife or like you know some kind of pyramid scheme, and they like the first two minutes you're like, oh man, this dude's got some good energy. Then you find out what they're really talking about, you're like, okay, man, I've been stuck here for 39 minutes, man. I can't listen to you anymore. It's just that's just how it is, man. He just he just rambles on and on and on, kind of like me with this segment right here. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I don't know, I don't <laughs> know who's the who's longer. The Ray Lewis Hall of Fame speech of Paul is Paul that talking is, about it. Right, that's the irony of the whole thing. <laughs> hey, I, and I'm, I'm doing my little shimmy dance right now. I'm doing my little my little Ray Lewis dance right over here. Hey, but that's the worst though. Is when if somebody invites you to an event, you know, they tell, "Hey, man, we got this, you know, financial uh, meeting or whatever about financial empowerment." Yeah, and then you go and it's like a pyramid scheme. Like that pisses me off. Like, at oh, least man. if I know it's a pyramid scheme going in and maybe you get $10 if people come or something, maybe I'm going to go anyway. But I hate it when people invite you to one and uh, misrepresent what it is and you get there and it's a pyramid scheme. You're like, dude, if you really? broke, If you're broke and you're telling me you want to talk, have a business meeting with me, I already know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> like, Dog, you ain't got, got no money, bro. <laughs> Dog, I, I got roped into the, one of those in college, like to a meeting or whatever like that. A bunch of dudes from school. Like, man, I, I just went to this, this person's house and it was like, it was like this this girl. And it's like, uh, she invited a bunch of different people from campus over there. Man, it was like maybe 20 of us in there and a bunch of dudes that, you know, not everybody I knew in there, but a bunch of people I knew. And this dude came in there and gave this like speech, basically trying to get us to sign up, sign up with him. Everybody walked about there, man. It was so funny. I felt, what, I, what look, was man, we, I, what was we selling in, high, in college? What was that? What's that? Yeah. What are y'all doing? Phone cards? Y'all doing We did phone something cards. about the phone with this. That was y'all. That wasn't me, though. Hey, was, but we, we made that entry money, though. <laughs> that was y'all. I, I, I remember we chipped one. in. We chipped in so he could get his money. And then, uh, you know, he, I think he gave us back like triple or something. We did pretty good off of that. I was out I there know. hustling. 
man, yeah. forget the man pyramid schemes. Get up out of here. But man, I felt I, I almost felt bad for the dude. I was like, but man, you've been wasting an hour of my life in here. Man. Right. <laughs> get up out of here, man. Get up out of here. Well, no. speaking about walking out of stuff, Paul, oh, yeah. we're going to take you. And I'm a little, I'm coming with trepidation because you went Ray Lewis on us on the last one. So hopefully this <laughs> one won't take yeah. an hour and 30 minutes too. But no, just kidding. So, yeah, speaking of walking out, go on and lead us into that next topic, man. Okay, yeah, so this is a story that went viral this week. Uh, there was like a plant, a, I guess a UPS, a new UPS facility being built in Indianapolis. And so there were some Mexican uh, workers there, a lot of Mexican workers that were uh, contractors working there on the job. I guess there was like some kind of like safety, inst- safety instructor on the job as well, but he was a white guy. And I guess from reading this article that came with the story, I guess he was you know, kind of saying some racist things, trying to get some of the Mexican guys off the job periodically. So basically all the Hispanic workers knew to kind of watch out for this dude. But anyway, one day, you know, this week, it, it, something boiled over. And so the dude tried to get, get a couple of the Hispanic guys off the, told him to get off the job set and uh, job site. And basically all the Hispanic workers, hundreds of them, at least a hundred or so, all decided to walk off the job site in unison. And so when they did that, that basically shut down the entire project, shut at least for down. that day. And so there was a, and so there was a, 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 a black gentleman that was working uh, uh, at, at the plant as well. And he, so he uh, recorded a little bit of the, of the people walking on the site. And so in the video, I'm not going to play the video because it's got a lot of curse words in it. But in the video, basically, we'll link it's, it in the show notes. It's a, yeah, we'll link it in the show notes if people want to listen to it. But so it's a black guy talking, and he's kind of just highlighting the, the, the Hispanic guys walking off the, off the set and off the job site. And so they shut it all down, and the whole thing, and it, you can tell when you look at it, it's a massive project. It's a very large scale project. And so that, that's untold, you know, hun- tens of thousands of dollars, uh, uh, you know, for cost for that for the company for UPS for shutting this down. So anyway, fast forward all that. So all that happened. The dude posted the video on his Facebook account, and I guess you know he was he's not a famous guy. He's just a regular guy. I think his name's Antoine uh, Dangerfield. Antoine Dangerfield. He had recently just moved to Indianapolis and worked for this company. You know, as a contractor. You know, a welder or something like that. But the video went viral. Uh, it got over two million and counting views over in the last week. So it made a big thing, and so obviously it got back to UPS and things like that. And UPS wanted the video down. <laughs> Supposedly, according to Antoine, uh, they offered him two hundred fifty dollars to take the video down, but the, <laughs> which is crazy. But uh, you know, the dude said, "Hey, you know, it's been viewed two million times. There's not really much I can do to you know take it back now. So there's nothing he could do." And he ended up losing his job. I'll also point out that the the white safety coordinator that I guess this kind of all started from, he also got lost his job as well. But the the gentleman that made the man, why did this dude lose his job for putting the video out there? Is why why he lost his That's job? Cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're putting out work stuff, so cool. so and yeah. So he's and he's a contractor, so he's not really he's not a UPS employee. Does, does you, oh, okay. But anyway, I mean, dude, does, does UPS have to get this smoke? I feel like I feel like they should get some. Uh, Something for firing this dude because I, I don't think. Well, UPS that. didn't fire him. The contractor yeah. that he works yeah. for uh, fired, fired him. Fired. Yeah, which, but you know how. Yeah, that I'm works. sure UPS. They put some pressure on. Him. Well, I don't know. I mean, the contractor probably they felt like they were gonna get some smoke about it, so they probably like, hey, let's fire, let's fire him, so we good with UPS. Uh, but UPS, I mean, they get smoke just because you had this racist dude that was uh, kicking the Mexican people off of the plant. And I will yeah. say, I'm glad you said that the guy just moved to Indianapolis because that was confusing me because I'm like, this dude is from Oakland. Like, he sounds like Marshawn Lynch. He sounds yeah, like yeah. Ryan Coogler. Uh, he sounds exactly like them in this video. Shouts to Ryan Coogler. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So so he had some – so he was doing – I thought it was a safety issue. It's not a safety issue. It was something racist. Yeah, apparently so, yeah. It was It was just a guy that – I guess he was just – He was. it was like a white safety coordinator, and I guess he was just – so I guess the Hispanics thought he, he was given a bunch of the different Hispanics, uh, you know, a hard time because I guess there, were, there was like a language issues. I guess they have to have an interpreter, and so the he was given since he was a safety coordinator, he was having to do, yeah, he was having to, uh, you know, like give instructions or you know give like little little training things to the Hispanics, and uh, you know they'd have to have an interpreter. So I guess maybe he didn't like that or you know something like that. But they all decided to walk off, and so it was a unison. But in the video. Uh, that Antoine recorded, you know, he's talking about like this, this is what black people need to do. And that's what that's where a lot of this went viral. It was a lot. I saw a lot of people, you know, black Twitter uh, going viral saying, yeah, we need to do this. We need to do this, too. So I just want to throw it to you guys. What do you what do you all think about this kind of this this this, this kind of labor organization type stuff? 
Well, something like that actually, well, it was different, but we saw the impact of black people coming together and doing that actually this week in St. Louis. So there was an incident Word. at a gas station. It was just uh, this gas mart. And so there was a black lady outside and probably on drugs um, or something like that. So she was out there. And I guess they had asked her to leave. I don't know if she was asking people for money or what or just hanging out. And she told, you know, she's kind of going off on the employees saying, you know, look, I ain't got to go nowhere. And, you know, she gave them a little little sass, we'll say. Uh, but mm-hmm. the t- employees came back out. It was two of them. And they're telling her, look, you got to go get out of here. And they kicked her. Like one kicked her in the stomach. And then he went back inside. Another dude came back and, like, kicked her on the side of the leg. So this was... This was seen. It was on video. Um, and so all the people in this is a predominantly black neighborhood. Uh, there were uh, Middle Eastern men that owned the store or run the store. So the community came out like, look, we're not having that. You you out here kicking people like you can you can tell her to leave. You could go off on or whatever. But, you know, you don't put your feet on nobody. And so people came out that day protested they like we shutting this down the police actually did come and they arrested uh the two people that kicked her but Dang. people were coming out for days you know just going to that gas station lot like nah y'all shut down y'all not operating and so they ended up they fired the two uh employees which i think one was either a, a owner or a co-owner or he was a relative to the owner but they fired both of them and they shut down the uh, gas station for at least a week. They said they were going to let the community heal. Basically, they didn't want that smoke. They didn't want them people coming out, but they they said the right things publicly, but they said they're going to shut down at least for a week. It may end up more than that. But in that situation, like I said, the community did come together and they they shut that mug down, literally. That's good stuff. I didn't hear about that one either. But what about you, Ryan? Anything like that? Uh, yeah, I mean, of course, there's always a reason to come together and and, and really uh, make a change. That's the only re- only way anything is going to change is if you do that. Uh, you got to be willing to actually have uh, fought one follow leaders. That's that's our problem. I think is we don't really want to. Well, maybe maybe we don't have the leaders or we don't all want to follow one leader. We have a lot of leaders. Everybody wants to be a chief and we don't have no Indians. That kind of thing. Okay. Uh, I guess using that particular <laughs> <laughs> using that particular analogy, <laughs> I guess maybe it's racist, but it still gets the point across. Yeah. Um, this kind of this kind of sorry, brought to my head. Did any Af- American Indians? Yeah, this brought up to my my head. Uh, like I so I, I haven't seen the movie yet, but the movie the Sorry to Bother You. You guys heard about that? That just came out with the the guy that was yeah. from an ATL and all that stuff like that. But like this is kind of like a big theme in that in the. No spoilers here, but that's kind of a big theme. It's like workers uniting and things like that in in the movie. Because uh, Ryan, you remember I was talking to you about the the director and like I guess his rap career and stuff like that. So I actually kind of read up on the little the book. I guess he wrote a book. Of, you know, it's kind of that was the screenplay for this this movie or whatever like that. So it's a, a lot of themes about that kind of workers, you know, which is kind of some some Marxist type stuff. But it was actually kind of interesting. Uh, just you know how you know just. You know, making shutting stuff down like this when things aren't going you know that we, people don't feel is right shut things down maybe and yeah. get some positive change so you know it's 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 definitely a it definitely can work i see at least at least in the short term i don't know how you know long term how, how it goes people yeah, have we, you know families to feed and things like that but in the short term I, maybe it made some change hopefully they i mean they got the guy up out of there they thought was a uh, treat him harshly and so that's i guess that's a positive you can say anything yeah, you see that happening more and more. I mean, in corporate America, I mean, when folks come out here dropping the N word, you know, Papa John, when he got fired, <laughs> it's because they knew that that bread, that money was about to start shortening up. Yeah. Um, so when you really, if you make an economic difference, if you either boycott or stop shopping or when people show up, I mean, people are about their money in this country. You know, it's a. Uh, is definitely a capitalist society. So when you impact people's money, and especially if you're not doing it in a reckless way, you're not, you know, destroying stuff, but you just stop shopping or get that word out, it makes a difference. So I'm sure that this company, this UPS out there, I bet they're going to treat their Hispanic and Mexican workers very, very well now because they saw, hey, they, they'll get up out of here and then we, ain't, we can't do anything. 
do we know? There's a lot. There's a lot more of us that can impact things than uh, people realize. Yep. And you see now with all this stuff, trying to get the the Hispanic immigrants out, and they're deporting and doing all this. And now you got a lot of those farming jobs and stuff like that, and especially on the border states, they can't. They don't have enough workers. Like there's not people to do those tasks. Well, you done deported uh, everybody. Who, gonna, who who did they think who did they think was gonna build a wall? Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the, the, the Mexicans who was gonna build a wall anyway, so they not for the build a wall. How you gonna get the wall built? Right. Not not for those wages. They they trying to to keep those you know right. those exactly. budget costs down. That yeah. mug is gonna be right. sh- if you don't have the brown delegation building the wall, it's gonna be trash. <laughs> <laughs> it might as well just be a fence, right. just like a picket fence, not even a tall. Uh, well, it's what well, first of all, it's, 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 I mean, well, we don't have to get political today. Uh, we can save that for another time. But it's supposed to be an invisible wall anyway, right? That's what he, that's what he right. said. A see through, <laughs> invisible see through wall. Yeah, so it's invisible see through. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, let's, we, we, let's move on. We, we, we've gone long, way long today, anyway. All right, all right. So, Paul, I do want to congratulate you, man. <laughs> Why is this? Why is this rap horn so lame? <laughs> <laughs> no cuss words from Paul. All episodes. Congratulations. Oh, man. I think thank, I think you'll you. be wrong when you go back through. It. <laughs> <laughs> nope, nope, nope. You didn't have any. Uh, that one part we're gonna take out, but that's not a problem. We're gonna take the whole thing out. All right. So it doesn't matter. So you did a good job. Other than that, I just wanted to show my thanks and my gratitude. My wife thanks you because she will get. A few more minutes with me tomorrow night. (laughs) (laughs) One more minute, actually, to be precise. (laughs) Yeah. All right. So uh, I guess that's it. We can wrap up this episode. Uh, We ran a little long, but that's okay. So Ishmael, where can they find us? You can find the Black Delegates Podcast. We are on Twitter and Instagram at Black Delegates. There's an underscore between Black and Delegates. If you want to follow Ryan on Twitter, he is at the Black Ryan. I am on Twitter and Instagram at Ish Creates. Uh, we are also on Facebook. I think I forgot to mention Facebook last time because I'm not on Facebook as much anymore. But Facebook is Black Delegates Pod. Uh, you can check us out there as well. And for your podcast listening, uh, you can listen to us wherever you listen to your favorite podcast, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or any of your podcast apps. Paul, if people want to support the show, want to help us out, what should they do? Tell a friend. Tell a friend. Tell a black friend. Tell a white friend. Tell a brown friend. Tell a purple friend. It don't matter. Just tell a friend uh, about the show. Tell them you like it. Tell me how the episode, a little segment you, 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 you'd like to, to check out. And that's it. And that's how we'll, we'll grow this organically, guys. So just tell a friend and they'll do all everything we need. There's Thank no you. such thing as purple friends. People always say purple. Like, I don't see color. Right. I don't see white or black or brown or purple. There's no purple. <laughs> and then they know there's no purple. That's why they right. say purple. That's racist. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So that is all. So I'm going to leave y'all with these parting words. And when I see racist things going on in America and uh, I just want to feel better about myself, this is the song that I play. <laughs> At least we know we're free. Good night. We're going to talk next week. We're going to have to talk about <laughs> whether American flags are racist. That's a, and that better not be your YouTube favorites. That better not be your YouTube favorites right there. That's in his it title is favorite. Just to make that, just to make that. Image. That's his title yeah. favorite, man. <laughs> yeah, that's he's the only person that downloaded on title. That's right. the only person on title ever downloaded. Yeah, <laughs> one, one stream, the black one. That's right. <laughs> All right, listener, I'll let you know. Peace. Next week. <laughs>